they are being forgotten today. These billion family members, these 160 million family people living with dementia must not be forgotten. The challenge today is that medications may give us more time to live with dementia, with Alzheimer's, but the crime is that without meaning in life, life is not worth living. What about these two parallel lines? Tomorrow, maybe there will be a cure, but today we must have a life worth living. This is really the motto I am, I am coming up with, and, and thanks to conversations with my colleagues here and others, Tomorrow we should have a cure, but today we need a life worth living. So, so what are these non-pharmacologic interventions? Many of them are about appreciating art and engaging in meaningful events, something meaningful in your life. Being creative, actually doing what our brains were made to do, our, made, our brains were made to invent, to discover, to learn. That's what these non all non-pharmacologic interventions are about, are using our brains as they were planned to be. So here's a program in London. Title song, the partnership project with English Touring Opera and the Royal College of Music. Title song is a music and movement project for people with Alzheimer's and their carers. performed the opera, people in the audience had dementia, they worked with the Royal Touring Opera and with professional musicians. This is going on now, I believe they just got funding to do three more operas in, in, uh, in, in London. Merseille mentioned the Artists for Alzheimer's program which we run in Boston and New York. There's a short video, I want you to listen to the the way the, the guide at this museum asked the questions and also the way this person with dementia who could not remember from one minute to the next what she was going to say, the way she describes this, this Picasso. Wow. called The Girl in the Mirror, and understands that Picasso understood the difficulty that the woman saw seeing herself in the mirror, her self-image. This is a profound understanding of a painting. So the first one was in London, the second one was in New York. Here in Spain, in the, the Murcia Museum, they have programs where they bring artists together, and people with dementia work with the artists and listen to them and contribute and appreciate the, the interaction. And this is Thessaloniki in Greece. This is not dance therapy. These are people dancing their traditional folk songs. These are people coming to a center to be part of their own life and to appreciate their culture and their life. And in the Prado in Madrid, where we hope to be having a program of arts in the next few months, there are many paintings. They already have tours for people with dementia. 
And there are many paintings there that would generate from our experience a great deal of, of interesting conversation. I welcome all of you to come and participate and watch these programs when we start them. They say amazing things. And these are some of the paintings that we have already chosen and done group, focus group interviews with people with dementia to determine which ones will engage people most and bring them most to life. And in Edinburgh, Scotland, my, friend, my colleague and friend John, John Killick writes poetry with people. And in New York City, there's a, a, a Gary Glazer who, who, who uh, was working with us inviting people with dementia. I picked this one because, as you will see, there is some Spanish. When they write the poetry together, they remember it. And as Mertha said, the kiss is the memory. And they remember this. And in fact, if you were watching closely, the person with dementia was correcting Gary to pronounce it. He says, oh, I now know what you mean. It's the kiss. So all over the world, there are these programs to bring people to life using engagement.